Now let's talk about male cancers. And as always a reminder, this is for complex last semester students, not for adult students that are paranoid and worrying about how in depth we're gonna go on their exam. So turn off now if you're an adult. So let's talk about prostate cancer. Um, so prostate cancer is one type of male cancer. It's more common in the African-American ethnicity, um, age greater than 50, those that have a family history, um, if they have a diet that's high in red processed meats and or dairy, um, having any sort of exposure to pesticides or chemicals or being obese. Um, you know, this is kind of like um, cervical cancer where they're like early on, there's no symptoms, um, but later they might have lower urinary tract sim symptoms, kind of like similar to BPH. So like the intermittency, hesitancy, um, frequency, nocturia, that kind of stuff that is common in the BPH. Um, diagnostic wise, we're going to do tests such as a PSA or a prostate specific antigen, um, a DRE, which is a digital rectal exam, every man's favorite type of exam. Um, and a biopsy of that prostate possibly. So, uh, you know, before we get into like treatment, let's talk about screening because um, prostate cancer screening is definitely something that is highly recommended. Um, men ages 55 to 69 should get it every two years. Um, it may, they may need to get it sooner than that if they have more risk factors. But the important thing to keep in mind is that many things can raise your PSA. So um, in other words, if I'm checking this PSA level to see if they um, have prostate cancer, um, older, a uh, certain age, especially as you get older, it can be automatically raised. Having BPH can increase it. If you've recently ejaculated or had sex, that can be higher. Constipation can increase it. Inflammation can increase it. And if they went in, and did a digital rectal exam or a prostate exam right before they draw the blood for this, it's also gonna be elevated. So any sort of pressure or irritation to the prostate elevates this. So it's a very sensitive, um, uh, what do you call it, um, lab where it, like uh, the lab is very sensitive to other outside factors. So it's not necessarily always the best thing, but it's one thing we can consider looking at multiple pieces of data. Um, we, can, uh, we can use it to screen for prostate cancer. Um, we can also use to monitor effectiveness of treatment because as a patient with prostate cancer is treated, um, their uh, PSA levels should be decreasing. So prostate cancer actually has a very good prognosis, even if it's not caught early, it is incredibly slow growing. So what, you know, most um, doctors will make a decision of is, you know, risk versus benefit. So most men that get this are older. And if the patient's going to um, probably die in the next 10 years because they have other conditions, if they have a low grade, low stage tumor, or a serious uh, coexisting medical condition, they're going to take a more conservative approach, literally do nothing, just watch it. And so one of my um, husband's, uh, we but um, his, let's say his sister's um, husband's dad um, had prostate cancer and he also had Alzheimer's, heart disease and other things. And they decided to do watch and wait. He had it for 15 to 20 years, never grew, never caused him a problem. Um, and so they never did anything about it because he had other serious problems going on. Um, they can, for some patients, especially if it is uh, more serious or fast growing, they can do surgical therapy and remove the prostate. The thing about removing the prostate is they have to go in and um, they have to go through a lot of nerves. And if they um, mess with those nerves or if those nerves aren't viable, that can affect the patient's ability to have an erection, um, to have sensation um, in their penis and things are in all the organs around. And so it definitely can affect their sexual life. So sexual counseling and kind of letting um, patients know about this and, you know, may say, like, hey, these patients are older. Believe it or not, people like to have sex until they die. So you definitely want to, you know, um, consider this and do special counseling and things with these patients to make sure they're aware of the possible side effects of this treatment. Um, there's also cryotherapy where they go in and freeze some of the tumor um, to help to um, kind of decrease the size of it. There's chemotherapy and radiation and then also drug and hormone therapy. Uh, overall nursing management, I want to support the patient with coping therapeutic communication skills, um, managing their pain and their symptoms. I really want to promote adequate urinary elimination because remember anything with the prostate can almost create an obstruction, um, which can decrease their ability to urinate. And remember, urinary retention is an emergency. So I need to be watching their urinary function closely, um, preventing any sort of complications um, in general. 
like I mentioned, we want to provide support for their sexual health because sexual health is a big component of quality of life, especially for men. So we always want to take this into consideration. Um, a lot of these patients are going to end up possibly with a catheter, especially if they have surgery. So I need to teach them how to care for that. Uh, adequate hygiene, not only just with their catheter, but with their penis in general and their surrounding organs to make sure that they don't get infection. Um, Kegel exercises to keep things strengthened and keep those um, the sphincters uh, very uh, capable to open and close adequately. And then pain management is going to be key as well. So let's talk about testicular cancer. Testicular cancer is very different than um, prostate cancer and that it happens in young males. So usually age 15 to 44. And one of the most common risk factors is undescended, uh, undescended testicles. Um, so um, someone whose um, testicles never dropped um, uh, is definitely one of the highest risk factors, but also family history and having HIV can put you at high risk. Um, usually the signs and symptoms are going to be a painless lump in their scrotum. They could have scrotal swelling um, or feeling of heaviness or a dull ache in their scrotum. Um, and they can also even have acute pain. Um, that's usually a little bit of a later sign. Um, diagnostic wise, uh, we do usually palpation to palpate for the tumor. Um, we can get an ultrasound of the testicles um, and look for tumor markers. So the tumor markers for testicular cancer are going to be an AFP, LDH, and HCG. And yes, you did look at that, right? The AFP, the alpha theta protein, um, the lact lactate dehydrinate. What is that? Let's say if I can say this, I don't know if I'm going to say it lactate de deoxyhydrodase or something like that. Um, and then HCG is that's the hormone for pregnancy, but it's also the gonadotropin hormone, which can um, be elevated or abnormal in testicular cancer. And then there's also CT scan. I'm probably regretting trying to pronounce all those words now. <laughs> anyway, um, overall treatment and management, um, it has a good prognosis, especially if caught early. They usually surgical remo uh, surgically remove the testicle. Um, they do radiation and care chemotherapy. Uh, something to keep in mind with their particular um, chemotherapy that's used for testicular cancer, it can cause organ failure and damage to the lungs, kidneys, nerves, and hearing. So I really want to look for those toxicities um, in these patients. I'm going to do regular surveillance and monitoring to make sure it doesn't reoccur. And we may want to do sperm banking in these patients so that, um, you know, especially since it's young patients that get this, um, so that if they do lose one or both of their testicles, that they may have some sperm left if they'd like to have kids later in life. Um, and then sexuality can counseling. Because again, anytime you're messing with uh, what you call male reproductive parts, um, we can mess with nerves and other things that can affect function of these organs. All right, that is male cancers. I hope that was helpful. I will see you for the next slide.